Hello everyone and welcome back to my Let's Play Kerbal Space Program. I have been looking at the transfer windows that we have for getting to the other planets and realized that we've missed a couple of them already because I haven't been paying attention to them. Moho and Eve are not going to make those. I would really have liked to get the Eve one, but not much chance of us pulling off a mission to get the stuff in orbit that we need inside of a day and 13 hours. But we have some other transfer windows coming up. Jewel, Elo, Dress, and the most important one is going to be Duna, as that's going to be our next stop. At least our next interplanetary stop. We're going to hit up the moon first, but I would like to design some ships, some automated probe type carriers, and then park them in orbit around Kerbin so that when a transfer window comes up I can just send them on their way. So what we're going to do t today is work on designing a sort of modular uh, I don't know transport slash probe carrier workhorse vessel that we can use to just slap all the stuff that we want on and tweak individually for each planet our moon, our system, or whatever you want to call it. So I think we're going to do this at an accelerated time rate. So let's get started. The first step is to design the core that this um, taxi is going to be built around basically something that has a whole bunch of connection points and I wanted to put this on one of those rotating docking collars from um, what is it infernal robotics just because I think the engines might get in the way might damage some of the components and for the engines I wanted something that I can use facing downward to get into orbit but the final design of the ship I want the engines to be at the head of the ship and pulling everything because I've been told that that is a much better design for interstellar ships, interplanetary ships, is to have them pull it and have everything be under tension and then instead of having to push this big wobbly thing. So we're going to have some really efficient nuclear engines and see if these work right with their servos. I wanted to make sure that the servos would allow fuel to cross flow into them and that was just what I was checking and then we're get doing all the obvious communication crap so that we can still have plenty of well communications from deep in between or whatever from far away that's what I mean to say from far away and then a couple of the couplers and finally the booster stay to get us out of orbit. I want to try something a little bit different here and start using the rapier engines. I've not really used them at all ever. The last time I played this game they weren't in yet. But based on the ISP, they should be remarkably efficient for getting us that first 20 kilometers or so where the uh, ISP of the regular rocket engines is really, really low. After about 20 kilometers, it starts to pick up. But that doesn't quite work out as well as I would like. So I have to adjust the design a little bit and add more engines because they're uh, 
thrust is not as high as I say it is. And the flight engineer is just all confused when you try to use rapier engines. But eventually, after a few attempts, I'm a able to come up with something that can in get into orbit. It is, to be fair, pushing quite a large mass. And additionally, the engines themselves, having a number of engines instead of one big, less efficient engines does seem to create, create a quite a bit more lag than other things. But we finally get our core into orbit. Moving on, the next part is the satellites. I've redesigned our previous communication and survey satellites, mostly replacing the RCS systems with the much more efficient ion drives for maneuvering thrusters, as well as slapping on a few more communication things. Comms, antennas, that's what I'm looking for, antennas. And I'm using the procedural fairings, the mid-intermediate ones. I had the idea here that I could use a puller design here with kind of the same thing and take up both at the same time but as you can see that did not work so well so I just ended up going back to the previous lifter design and we dock one set of the satellites I wanted to get two up but I was unable to do so next I brought up a just a refueler a fuel tank and then dock that real quick and then sending the taxi back down now we need to design some science probes first step we're going to design are going to be for the upper and lower space or space high above and space near science for the both the moon and the main planet, which first mission we're going to send is going to be to Duna, as that is, I think, the easiest thing to get to. So, trying to get this set up just so that I can make a sub-assembly, which can be a bit annoying about what it allows you to connect it to, but we finally get that done. And then we want to sort of redesign that so that we can have one for getting on the surface and back. Mostly using parachutes to get down. I can't get the Kerbal Engineer thing to work properly in telling me how much Delta V I have. I think it's because I'm having modded parts on the top part. So I just stack a whole bunch of fuel, fuel tanks on top of it to give me a rough estimate. And then see if I can't get that one saved as a sub assembly as well. Apparently the landing legs are not quite good enough. But back to designing a lifter for it. We're using pretty much the same lifter design I've been using. And I'm absolutely determined that I'm going to only make one trip with the lifter. So I'm using the procedural fairings again to put these in the middle in sequence. And of course, lots of action groups for all the science, especially for the atmospheric one, or the one that's going to go on the planet. It needs to get as much science as possible as quickly as possible as it passes through the upper and lower atmosphere. Then the first one, as you'll soon see, has a little problem with stability and flips out, so I add some SAS to it, and the second launch flips out. But the third one, the third one flips out 
snaps in half, and then explodes when it crashes into itself. The fourth one. The fourth one flips out, but makes it into space, where it promptly loses connection and then plummets back to the Earth. The fifth and sixth ones flip out so badly that they use all their fuel, fuel trying to recover. But the seventh one, with all of the SAS in the world on it, finally, finally makes it into space in a stable orbit. On to the docking. Right as we're going in for the docking, we come around into the sunlight, providing us with some much needed illumination. I should mention that by this point with all these parts, this game is running extremely slow. And also we have the nifty little docking alignment indicator mod over there in the corner, which is fantastic. I really hope they eventually put something like that in the core game. It is so badly needed. But as I was saying, the game is running rather slow at this point. We're actually watching this at 20 times speed. This docking these two things took 17 minutes in real time. And then we get rid of the taxi module. And the last little bit is to dock the last set of satellites. And to get all the fuel set up, I'm adjusting the other four um, engines that are on the boosters for the satellites and decided to keep those. I throttled them down to 90% though, so it'll still be technically a puller. And we just need to edit this. Which, as you can see, this part is in real time. It is a little bit difficult to do. But I'm going to call this, assuming I can actually type it at this frame rate, the Ares 1, since Duna is an analog to Mars, and Mars is another name for Ares, that's what we're calling this. But that's it for this episode, like if you like, subscribe if you're not, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.